You ready? I'll call the public uh, meeting to order. Oh no, what is the uh, public hearing to order? So, Mr. Happy Bell, Bell, it's up all to you. Well, thank you. I'm happy to open the public hearing on our Amherst Schools School District's Code of Conduct and a couple of modifications this year. Last year, you may recall, there were some pretty hefty modifications with DASA um, and some special languages this year. They're actually pretty nominal. Um, but you may or may not be aware from my second past presentations, but the district is required to code of conduct which governs the behavior of our students as well as visitors on campus um, throughout the school year. And every year, we review the code of conduct to address any policy changes or legal changes. So just as a reminder, some of the New York State requirements um, and procedural requirements that exist are enumerated here. Number one, in our plan, we have to define um, the required components and terms, which many of you may have seen as, as you have students in the Code of Conduct. It starts with all the legal definitions and the terms throughout. Um, the second is to create and adopt a Code of Conduct, um, which require components. The district, of course, has had one in place for many years, and we review that annually. Number three would be to communicate um, and provide access to the document, which is linked here, but of course it's on our website. I know as parents this time of year, we're getting all this information in paper, comb, and emails and links sent home to us as well. And lastly, to review that process, to review the code of conduct annually, which we've done over the summer, and then hold at least one public hearing, which is this evening, um, and adopt any changes within a 30-day period, and there's a 30-day comment period as well, and I'll run through that in a moment. So it is, it's been up on our website. The public comment period ends on September 21st. I originally, we originally had this hearing scheduled for later in September, <coughs> excuse me, but the comment period ends September 21st. To date, I have received no comments. Um, it's been up there for a couple of weeks. Last year, um, for those of you who may not have been with us last year, um, a couple of big changes came through um, in regards to DASA and then how that is implicated within our code of conduct. That's Dignity for All Students Act. Um, the other big change last year was the referrals to uh, student services, which is a CSE process and a legal guideline in a separate set of laws, so it was removed from a code of conduct um, as recommended to us by our attorneys, so it's duplicative, and it, as the law changed in IDEA, we didn't want this to re reflect something that was not consistent with that law. This year, um, frankly, I had to sort of stretch a little bit. There aren't a great deal of updates this year. Um, so a couple that I'll run through here in a second, but two uh, are some conversation around progressive versus more serious discipline, and I'll run through that in a moment, um, as well as some other special education CSE language. So some of those substantive changes are listed here. Um, progressive discipline, for those of you who may or may not be aware, progressive discipline essentially means that a student's first violation will usually merit a lighter penalty than subsequent. So in other words, if your kid does something they're not supposed to do, they may get a bit of a punishment, but if it's their first violation, it usually hits home with something, with a detention or an in-school. Um, and then if those behaviors continue, then the, then the consequences continue to rise with it. So the general rule here, as in most districts, is that progressive discipline is where you start with students. So that's reflected in the Code of Conduct. Second, um, a topic we hope to not come back to, and that's masks. But however, if masks are ever required again, notification to families will be provided. That's a, that's a note within the Code of Conduct. So if that happens to be needed again, notification to families will be provided. Number three, uh, some clarification around CSE and manifestation determination. For those of you who are unaware, if a student with a disability um, finds some trouble, um, if they're suspended for a certain number of days, we actually have to meet at something called a manifestation determination meeting. So if there's a superintendent's hearing, that meeting's held afterwards by our, it's sort of like a CSE. And they look at whether or not the disability is connected with the behavior or not. And if it is, you go down the run route, and if it isn't connected, you go down a different route. Um, and that information is fed back to Superintendent Pinella to help make decisions on punishments for that particular student. So <clears throat> there's some clarifications here. Similar to last year, remove some language because you don't want to be overly prescriptive knowing that this law is defined in IDEA and shouldn't be defined in a, a code of conduct. <coughs> <laughs> Lastly, um, so disabilities and CSE language, again, some overly specific language was once again removed this year to allow for IDEA to define 
any steps that need to be taken with dreams and disabilities as opposed to the code of conduct. <coughs> so that's, that, those are the big changes this year. Not a lot this year, it's pretty light. The next step would then be to continue to review if any comments came in through the comment period through September 21st. And then this would be on your agenda for approval on October 3rd, which would be the next board meeting after it closes, because the next board meeting is on the 19th, which would be before the public comment period officially closes. So having said that, uh, so it was going to be brief this evening. Um, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. If not, I would be happy to close them. Do you anticipate any questions? Did you ever get questions on? I typically Some don't. Questions? This year is pretty light. Um, the other year I did because we had some pretty substantial changes. Okay. And if you remember a couple years ago, we had some changes relative to COVID. Yeah. So there were some questions from you as well as someone from um, the audience back when we were winning. Okay. Um, but tonight I didn't expect too many because there aren't really okay. any heavy changes. So okay. um, if there aren't, uh, questions about questions is good. Um, <laughs> That's all I got. If there aren't any more, I'd be happy to close the hearing. Great. Well, thank you again for your support. Um, and this will be on your agenda on October 3rd. Great, thank you. With that, I'm going to call the regular meeting to order and stand and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, we do have one visitor signed in wishing to speak, Jane Sullivan from ECASB. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me, and um, welcome back to school. <laughs> Can't believe you guys are having a board meeting on the first day of school, but okay. That's real dedication. Um, I'm just here to kind of follow up with a couple of emails, I, uh, hoping that you've seen them. Um, we do have a change on our calendar, and you guys do have it in front of you. Um, there's a misprint. Obviously, our district budget votes are not on May 14th. They are on May 21st, so if you wouldn't mind just xing that out and fixing that. Um, and to call attention to the Rick Tim's uh, dinner that is coming up on October 12th. Um, and to let your district clerk know if you want to attend. We hope to see many of your faces there. Um, that's always a really great program. So if there's anything that ECSB can do for you during the school year, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself or, or David, our, our uh, executive director. We're always here for you. Thanks. And, and thank you for that chat that I've already <laughs> <laughs> I told you when the last one, so. <laughs> I ate the whole thing. I ate one in the car. It was very delicious. Thank you. And Jess has pushed hers over to me now. So no questions asked. So. All right. I know we do not have any written communication. Do we have any reports of boards and committees? Okay, um, I can tell you from my standpoint, I attended um, the opening day for teachers last week, Thursday, on August 31st. Um, it was a shortened version this year because they did a lot of online training. So the morning was uh, speeches by both myself, um, Mr. Davis, the, uh, the union president, and Mr. Pinella, along with Mr. Belisle, doing some minimal training before they send everybody off. But it was very nice to see everybody back and in the building. Everybody seemed ready to go. It wasn't hot in there. So. The other thing is um, the building boards. Oh yes, that's great. All the buildings look really good. Yeah. The building. Yeah, we did our building tours building. later that same day. I've um, ever seen them. Yeah, they looked fantastic um, and continue to see upgrades uh, that our own staff are doing, not just yeah. capital project That's work. That's so, you know, like yeah. painting and the restoration. Different things areas. like making the colors and everything more uniform in, in the elementaries or things. And the, the staff is really doing a nice job in bringing the buildings uh, a little bit, modernization, I guess, in colors and what have you to them. So that was a nice job by them. With that, I will turn it over to the superintendent. Well, thank you. Um, you know, Paul 
gave a really nice speech, um, you know, from the heart, which, uh, you know, is always received well, but he would personalize it and incorporate it, you know, not only what's happening with his own family currently and how much they benefited from being uh, in the district, but also reflecting on his 15 years on the Board of Ed and how he's seen things change, you know, over that time and in a positive way. So it helps set a really nice tone for the start of the school year. And, um, you know, Mike and Lynn worked very hard to flip our mandated training to an online format, which I think is appreciated by most. Um, so folks have until the end of this week to complete that mandatory training. Um, so we were able to get people in and out, celebrate the new year, welcome everybody back, and then back to their buildings for more training, classroom setup, professional development, etc. If, so, I, if I could add, we did about awards at that for years of service, and there was 12. 12 25 year years of service awards mm -hmm. given out. There was a 35 year, how many 30s? Three. Three 30s. So. <clears throat> Quite, yeah, yeah. That's still probably the largest amount I've seen since I've been going. So, yeah, definitely a sign of things to come. Um, but and then today, as Jane mentioned, first day with students, you know, all the hard work that we put in to prepare finally comes to fruition today, and we welcome back all of our smiling young faces, um, ready and eager for a new school year. Um, the year seemed to kick off with students really positively from what I saw at the buildings. Um, obviously, we expect and anticipate and communicate that there's going to be transportation delays as we work through the first few days of school, but um, you know that's anticipated and we always remind people of that, not to be too alarmed by that. But it seemed like um, the year kicked off really well. Um, didn't hear too much about the heat. Uh, we had to make some adjustments to our afternoon sports, but I do have a plan at our next agenda uh, to give you a more comprehensive update on opening days, including opening days with staff and students. So stay tuned for that. Um, we do have a fund balance and reserves report from Mrs. Wazinski as we've closed out the books for the 22-23 school year. And then we'll talk a little bit about uh, board topics for the upcoming year. So welcome, Laura. Thank you, thank you. Um, similar to Mr. Belisle, I believe this will be brief. Our presentation is very similar to the draft presentation and the projections that we gave in June. Um, while we are much closer to having everything finalized, there were not many significant changes, which was, um, which was great. So this is a picture of um, where we are now with closing of the 22-23 school year. We did see an increase in revenues of about $3 million over our budgeted projections. The majority of that came from Erie County sales tax, interest earnings, as well as um, our rebates for health insurance and pharmacy. And that's an adjustment, if you remember, that we made in this upcoming budget, we included those so that we're accounting for them. And then the appropriated fund balance and reserves of $4.3 million those are monies that we currently had that we appropriated to next year's budget in various formats. Um, that 4.3 million consists of the 1 million fund balance that we appropriate, our reserves that we appropriate, our carryover POs, which was just over 700,000. And then this year it's a little larger than it would normally be because it also includes the $2.5 million of reserves that we contributed into our capital fund to support our new project. So with all of that taken into account, our revenues are about $1.2 million, less than what we would have um, expected if everything had come in, but it's actually higher because that should have been negative about 2.5 million because of the usage of the capital reserves. On the expenditure side, we show $2,800 left at the end of the year. 
That's because our expenditures include $870,000 moving over into the capital fund to further support that new project. So we had promised our taxpayers that we would contribute $3.2 million over the next four to five years. We weren't originally anticipating having funds to put into the project this first year, but um, the year went well and we were able to get it started with $870,000. So overall, it shows a, a negative of 1.2 million, but that's actually just a usage of fund balance. Again, we would have anticipated about 2.5 million in usage. So where does that leave us? We started the year at 10.7 million in total fund balance. With that usage of 1.2, we anticipate um, ending about 9.4 million. Originally, our overall goal was to be around 8 million. So we're above that threshold, which is great. So this is just a quick look at what our ad current adopted long-range plan for reserves looks like and how much money can be funded or used out of um, each of the reserves. This is just what we adopted last November, and we'll be going through this process again in a couple months, um, updating it for the upcoming year. This is what the change, these are the changes that we actually made, which reflect the 1.2 million that we used. Um, we will be increasing our unappropriated fund balance, about $300,000 to maintain it at 4%, which is the allowable limit, which will bring us to just over $3 million in unappropriated fund balance. Um, our carryover encumbrances are increasing slightly this past year, there were 734,000. This current year, there's 789. And those are purchase orders that we had in place during the school year, but for whatever reason, they didn't close out. Either the services weren't completed by the end of the year, or the goods weren't received. So we carry those POs into the upcoming year so that we're using the 22-23 money to continue making those payments and not negatively affecting the 23-24 budget. <coughs> You can see that we had the 2.5 million out of the two capital reserves moving over into H fund, which would take them both in, down to zero. And that left us with about $890,000 that we needed to move into reserves. And based on the conversations that we had, we divided that into 285,000 into our TRS reserve and just over 608,000 into our employee benefit reserve. So that's how the breakdown of the 9.4 million would look um, at here. And then these are the resolutions that we passed in June. So we are well within our limits. And we're off to the new year. Um, the auditors are still closing, doing some final transfers. The majority of our general fund is done, but we're still cleaning up some of the details. We will be meeting with the audit committee the end of September with Drax. We'll be presenting to the board our um, final audit early October, I believe it's October 3rd, which will then allow us to submit our audit by the due date of October 15th. Any questions? It was very similar to where we were, um, what our projections were in June. We need no. Oh. Okay. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I like how you emphasize thank you and put questions up on the top yeah. left. So I think that's a strategy Lynn would appreciate. <laughs> um, thank you for that, and kudos to you on having such accurate projections going back to June, because this has been a pretty consistent uh, presentation throughout the last. A uh, few months, so nice job. Um, the other uh, item on the superintendent's report is our board meeting topics. So as you know, this is always kind of a work in progress. Um, there are some <coughs> things that are routine that we put forward, like our building updates, our budget calendar, budget development calendar. Uh, but we have some things that are also unique to every school year, like the volunteer firefighter, you know, tax exemption presentation and things like that. Um, so, you know, if you had a chance to look at this, we can certainly take any suggestions for um, topics you might want to see. 
or I would also remind everybody that Paul <coughs> and Jess and I meet every Thursday to set the agenda for the prior Tuesday's board meeting. So if there's a topic that comes up that you're not thinking of now that you'd like to see information on, um, you can let them know and when we set the agenda, we can find a place where it fits best. Questions, comments, chocolate? <laughs> The other thing I would point out on here is I do have a couple placeholders at the bottom, um, just for as reminders more for myself than anything. You know, we're still working on identifying the board retreat in terms of topic and date, so I have that um, as a reminder so we don't lose sight of it. Um, we know we're going to have um, some work being done by our DEI committee that will find out, monitor that work and how it plays out and when it would be an appropriate time to put a presentation in. Um, last year we did cancel the phys ed and health curriculum update because of the change in AD. So I just put some things on here that I don't, uh, so that I don't forget. I'm just forecasting into a year from now. Um, we did come to the conclusion that we need two board meetings in August. Um, and when I met with Laura and Mike, we outlined what those meetings would look like as far as business, not necessarily topics, but there's some things that are timely that need to get done for the county and the tax warrant um, so we can make that a little bit um, more routine as far as the two meetings in August. Um, we've been a little bit here and there the last few years with COVID and reopening planning and we, some years we had one, some we didn't. So. We're going to look to make that a little bit more routine. Could I just mention one thing? <clears throat> because um, I know you're new. And I just wanted to let you know that those items that are bracketed mm -hmm. are things that we work on prior to the board meeting. So we'll see that there are certain resolutions or to like, say uh, certain financials are supposed to be on the board. Okay. Once again, draft work in progress, always open for um, ideas and always monitoring things as they progress to make sure we bring them forward in a timely manner as well. Um, you can't always anticipate everything a year in advance. Um, that's all we have for the superintendent's report tonight. We can move on to new business. Okay. I will need a motion for new business items. I'll make a motion for new business items F1, A through B, 2, B through E, and 3G. We have a second. So Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of approving new business items F1, A through D, F2, B through E, and F3, G, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Ms. Custody, do we have any follow up action items? Okay. And we will need a motion to convene to executive session. I'd like to make a motion to convene to executive session to discuss matters regarding employment of a particular person. A second. All in favor of convening to executive session, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. What's that? Mm -hmm. oh, new, oh, I'm sorry. Um, if you, I understand you're a new hire to our yes. team. Would you mind standing and telling us who you are? So I apologize for not recognizing you. No, it's I, okay. I, I usually like to recognize new team members and say welcome <laughs> to the team. So No, I get it. Um, I'm Anna Stang. I am long-term subbing for Ms. Winslow at the high school. So I'll be teaching her photo one, photo two, graphic design, and one of her drawing and painting courses. Um, this is my first real position out of college. I graduated in the spring, uh, so it was <coughs> brand new for me. Um, and I'm super excited to be working with everybody here. So, well, welcome yeah. to our team. We Thank look you. forward to having you. And if you've, <laughs> you. if you've been down there, it's a beautiful restoration. You know, oh that whole downstairs yeah. we just toured. I mean, yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's and my classroom is air conditioned. Where's the two second, like, uh... <laughs> Thank you very much. Perfect. We will go to executive session.